Hello. Howdy, everybody. All right. How's it going there? Hey, Reiji, you're here. Um, one question that I want to ask you guys as we get started. Oh, well, first of all, we'll get into it here. Uh, and a couple things to talk about about the build as we get into it. But I guess uh, before I get into that, so I don't have to repeat myself. I'll give it a few minutes here for some people to come in, but uh, excuse starting a little bit late, slightly. Just uh, just feeling for the seam line here. Feels pretty good. It's such a satisfying feeling of that being so nice and sharp and square. Uh, and I'm getting a call, which might be a call that I was waiting for. So give me a second, guys. Nope, definitely not. <laughs> All right. What's going on, Trey? Uh, Uber Zaku. Ricky B, what's going on? Hey, so yeah, starting a little bit late because uh, I had a video uploading. And if you guys tuned into the live stream the other day, uh, we had a problem with the stream quality being because I had a video uploading at the same time that I was streaming. And I think that was just not what we're going to work out. So uh, I had a video that was just almost done uploading. So I'm like, uh, either to cancel this and restart the upload or just start the stream a few minutes late. So I opted to just start the stream a couple minutes late. So anyway, if you uh, had been aware that the stream was planned to start at three and you've been waiting around, I apologize. So we're just starting 10 minutes late. Uh, Jazz said, afternoon. Uh, great thing about summer break is being able to catch the live streams live. Yes, indeed. So thanks for tuning in uh, over there on Twitch as well. Oh, my wings is there. Just got here. You didn't miss anything. Just getting started off. I'll just let you guys know kind of about uh, what I've done on the in-between. Basically, in-between the stream the other day. Do you hear me talking here or YouTube? Yeah, um, either Twitch or YouTube. Doesn't matter. I can see both the chats here. So wherever you are, if you're wanting to chat and be interactive, I can see you there just fine. So uh, greetings from Mexico. Hello. And Enrique. Hello. Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, so yeah, between Monday and today, since we last saw each other, I haven't done any work on the main body. So that's basically still in two halves with our separate cockpit piece, which will go inside here. I can probably just go ahead and glue that into the bottom of there. Uh, but what I have done is work on some of the parts that have seams, just because that stuff just needs to be glued. And then I just have to wait overnight. Uh, or at least wait for a while for the glue to dry and then sand the glue and all that stuff. That wasn't all that exciting. So I did that kind of in, be in between times. So you guys saw um, in the last video, we put the two halves of the engine together here. So I went ahead and once that glue was all dried on that, got rid of the little bit of seam line here on that, ended, uh, added this end piece on here. And there's a couple little kind of like greeble, greebly type pieces that go in there, which are very strange in the way that they fit. Zoom in on this, show you guys what I mean, maybe if possible. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. And is I'm seeing it weird on my end. Let me know if you guys also is the green like flashing. Are you seeing that? And I think it's just because of the uh it doesn't look weird on the camera. Let's see, it looks right on the camera, but for some reason the feed, I don't know how I'm seeing it on the screen there. It looks like it's uh, getting that rolling lens. Uh, that's the word. English. I can't remember the right word for it. Uh, yes. Anyway, you're seeing some weird effect there with the green. I'm seeing it, but I, hopefully you guys aren't seeing it. it. Looks fine to me, Jazz said. Uberzaku said it looks good. Okay. I don't know. For some reason, I'm seeing it. Um, shutter. I'm seeing like the rolling shutter effect where like the colors flashing. Looks weird. But if you guys aren't seeing it, then that's good. Anyway, uh, these little kind of guys here, these raised bits, those were added on later. And like, there's a way for them to plug in on this side, which looks weird, but then they kind of go off and they kind of look, make like a Y kind of shape here. These ends don't really line up with anything. They're just kind of there and look kind of strange. 
because they're just like rested on top of there and don't line up with like these other kind of detail bits or anything necessarily. So it's kind of weird, but you know, once it's all painted, it's just going to look like mechanical detail. It's not really going to look like anything. So that's fine. But anyway, that was strange. Uh, the other things that needed to be glued were parts for the weapon. Basically, there's three parts here that have seams. Um, this part and this part are for like the left and right side for the laser cannon. And what I didn't know last time, uh, Enrique is asking, what is the thing? This is the Falke Machining Krieger kit. This one. So I did an unboxing uh, video for this kit a couple weeks ago. So if you're interested, you can go back and maybe check out that unboxing briefly and then come back to the live stream. But um, so what I didn't realize last time when I was looking at the instructions, and I just wasn't really paying attention, is that um, you have the option of the doing the uh, Gatling gun, or as it's called here, the 2.3 centimeter Balkan Ordnance Mark 54, or the Eximer laser cannon. So you can either have it with the Gatling gun or the laser cannon. So I'm not sure which one I want to use. So for the meantime, I've gone ahead and put together these parts for both. This is a part that had a seam line. Uh, you put these two halves together. This is a part for the Gatling gun. These are parts for, and there's one more, actually this one, which I just put glue on. So this one, I'm not ready to sand yet. This is also a part for the uh, Gatling gun, if you go for that option. But these are for the uh, laser cannon. I I don't know. I'm not sure which one to go for, to be honest. Because the I do really like the look of the laser cannon. It's really cool. But the Gatling gun also looks cool just because it's kind of like more, there's more parts and it looks kind of more detailed and stuff. Whereas this, I mean, it's just kind of a very simple shape. Not a whole lot of detail going on there or anything really. But it still looks really cool. So I'm a bit torn on that. Um, either way, on here, in the last video, I was talking about this, how... I'm going to have to rescribe, I'm sure, some of these panel lines on here because some of the panel lines, details and stuff on this are quite shallow. And on this weapon here as well, it's got like a little bit of like panel line to detail there, but it's very shallow. So, uh, and okay, so let's talk about the pilot figure because last time I was saying I'm not sure if I want to have the hatch open or not. I was pretty sure that I did not want to have that hatch open. And so the interior detail really did matter in that case. But now I'm thinking that I do want to have the hatch open. Uh, as I'm just trying to line this up temporarily just to show you guys what it looks like. But basically, one thing that's been kind of of interest to me, and especially when it comes to machining Krieger builds, um, is the realism of them as one thing that I've always found kind of, I don't know what kind of where the idea started and I'll, I'll talk about this a lot more in a later video, actually, which, um, yeah, we'll talk more about. And that, that should hopefully, okay, that's why it's not lining up. That should hopefully be like a very interesting video, I hope for you guys, cause it'll be more of like a discussion type video. Anyway, um, with Machine Krieger and like, most model kits, like what we're dealing with, what we're making in the model kits are weapons, essentially, like whether it be like a Gundam or, you know, tanks, obviously, like real world stuff, of course, but even like, um, even like something as like innocent, sort of seeming as like a Mecha Musume type build, like a frame arms kit or something like that, we're dealing with something that's weaponized, like it's a weapon of war weapons by design are like made with the intention of like destruction death they're made to kill and or destroy opponents right but you don't really ever get that sensation i feel like when you're building them like you're building like this cool gundam model that has this big gun or big sword or whatever and like it's cool but like thinking about it like in a real world sense that what we're looking at as something that's cool is something that's made to kill people. <laughs> so it's an interesting thought to think about. So anyway, just uh, not getting too much into it now at this point, but um, 
one thing that I want to try to do, especially with machine Krieger models, where they are kind of different from Gundam models in that they're much more realistic. They're still sci-fi, uh, but uh, they're much more kind of realistic as in they're not like this giant super mecha. Basically, they're like pretty close to real world stuff, right? Um, near sci near future sci-fi, I guess maybe is one way you could put it. But especially with machine Krieger, I think it's in what is interesting for me what is an interesting goal that i want to try to work on is finding ways to kind of make the model kits seem more realistic as to like actually showing like in some way sort of like the horrors of war in a way right how it's not like a something cool but actually something like pretty terrible actually in a way but how to actually express that with model kits, I feel is very difficult. So it's a challenge, uh, but so how that connects back to what I'm talking about with this particular kit, what I decided to do is to have the hatch open. And what I wanna do with the pilot figure is basically make it so that um, the pilot figure is like half in the cockpit. So like he's standing on his chair. So make it that like, uh, He's just kind of standing there. And in my mind, what the scene is of basically just the, the Falke just like hovering is that like it's maybe between battle or like before a battle or something where the pilot's just like, just like standing up in the cockpit and like just kind of looking out that maybe the Falke is just kind of like hovering somewhere. Not that it's like flying or going into battle or anything like that, or not that it's got like battle damage or anything. I don't plan on doing that with this build, but have him that he's just kind of like standing up in the cockpit looking out at the world the sky maybe for example um so just kind of like a peaceful kind of scene but uh you know just something realistic i feel like that's something that someone might do if you're in like a uh aircraft that like has the ability to hover like wouldn't it be cool to be able to like pop open the canopy and be able to just like stand up in your hovering ship and just kind of look out. So that's what I want to do so with the pilot figure. So I started putting together the pilot figure. Um, there's a lot of uh, sanding and puttying and stuff that's going to need to go on with this because the seams are pretty bad on the uh, pilot figure. So I'm going to need to work a little bit more on that. I'm not going to do that right now uh, during this live stream, but there's like the pieces for the pilot figure here. And I'll also have to do a little bit of modification just to the pose of it because right now the pose He's like, uh, Fenrir said, can't wait to get back into modeling. Yeah, I hope so. Um, the pose, it's like, it's meant to be sitting down, like with the hands kind of at the like control sticks on the side. I really only have to modify it a little bit so that he's like basically in a more kind of standing up position. So I'm just going to leave the legs as they are. But if you imagine like the chair is like this, instead of being sat in the chair is going to be standing on the chair sort of with his butt against like the back of the chair or something like that you can imagine i think it should look pretty realistic to like how you would do it um so i basically just had to modify the angle of the arms instead of being down here like this they're going to be maybe a little bit more up i think just to kind of get the pose right so i'll have to do that later but that the good point of that means is that i don't have to put the pilot figure in ahead of time i'll be able to just put it in later so that we can basically just put aside for right now. And I can kind of just work on that. Because like I said, it's going to take some little bit of sanding and puttying and sanding to get that right. And that's all before we even get to the actual painting of it, which I'm not looking forward to. I'm not very good at that. Fortunately, it has a helmet. So I'm not going to I'm not going to paint the actual face. I'm just going to keep the helmet on. That way, number one, I think the helmet just looks cool for one. Uh, but then I also don't need to worry about painting the face. Uh, so Red5 is there on Twitch. What's going on? All right. So after that whole, after that whole spiel, now we can get into the model. Uh, just wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about kind of what I've been thinking about, about this model since we were live the other day. And the problem we have now then is that if I'm going to have the cockpit open, then the cockpit needs to be painted because otherwise, if this is all closed up, then I have to try to paint it through this little hole in the top. 
which I think might be fine. <laughs> That's probably, I mean, like, I'm going to see. We'll see about it. I'm going to try to see how much of this I can put together. But I'm a very impatient person when it comes to modeling. And if I think that I can get away with, because uh, basically it's, that means like I had to paint all this inside part first before I can put the two halves together. And then there's the, all the work of getting rid of the seam just because it's a huge seam line removal job just to get rid of the seam going all the way around the outside. I kind of want to just get that done now and then worry about all the painting later. I don't want to paint a little bit, then do more seam line removal sanding and all that and then finish with some more painting. So anyway, if I think I can get away with sealing this up now and then painting the, the inside of the cockpit, because really the guy is going to be standing in here in the cockpit and really deep down in there is going to be not going to be visible at all, basically. Yeah, I know Lennon's saying usually the cockpit is painted and everything else is closed. Yes, I know. Usually that's how it's supposed to go. Like traditionally, technically, if you're doing it the right way, that's how it's supposed to go. But I might not do it like that. I might just go ahead and seal it up and then uh, just try to paint uh, whatever I can of the cockpit from the outside. And I think it should be fine because, like I said, you're really barely going to be able to see down into it. So if I can paint just like the areas that are a little bit more easily seen, the parts that are like way down deep in there, it really doesn't matter. I feel like it should be fine, but I don't know. <laughs> I would understand completely if some people might be a little bit disappointed with that. So anyway, okay. Uh, we'll cross that bridge maybe here in a little bit. For now, there is some more stuff that we can do in the meantime that we can just work on here temporarily and then I'll kind of cross that bridge in a little bit. But there's like some stuff here on the top half of this that we can do and bottom half respectively. I feel like it would just all would be so much easier once this is closed up though. Uh, angles are your friend when something is hard to see. Yes, exactly. That's a huge surface. Yes, it is a lot of area to cover. I agree, Gundam models, uh, Gundam model kits really don't communicate its use as a weapon. Yes. I would leave it up to the proper paint job and more near future detail. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about USA Gundam store. They make shipping to Mexico. Uh, I ask that uh, Viscous. Uh, I'm in, I'm from Mexico. I asked that because I'm from Mexico and don't, if they do that. Sorry, Enrique, I'm trying to uh, read what you're trying to say there. I think you're wondering about if, if US Gundam Store can uh, ship to Mexico. Uh, I believe for the time being, we're just not shipping anything abroad. So I would say no. Um, there's a couple of things. It's like I was just saying, there's a couple of things that can be glued on. Basically, um, before sealing everything up. But at the same time, uh, like if I glue this little piece on the side here, it's really near the seam so that it might kind of get in the way while I'm trying to sand the seam on that. So I don't know. The more I think about it, the more I'm just feeling like I'm probably just going to go ahead and glue that together and then just try to paint the cockpit later what's visible on the outside. I don't know. It may be a good learning experience. It might, uh, might turn out that it was a terrible idea. And hey, then at least I'll know not to do it next time. Uh, do you normally stick with using one airbrush or do you have various dif uh, for different uses? Well, yeah, primarily I use one. I I have, uh, so the one that I use is a uh, 0.3 millimeter one, which is kind of the standard size, what probably 
most people use for like mecha modeling, airbrushing. 0.3 is pretty standard. Uh, but I do have a 0.5, which is larger. So that is something I would only use for like a, a mega size kit or something that's pretty big. So it, that's a to give you a wider coverage. So if you're trying to paint something pretty big with like a 0.3, it just takes forever. So I do have a 0.5, which I would use for something large. Might come in handy for something like this, but I don't plan on uh, airbrushing this. But on a larger kit, yeah, definitely having a 0.5 is uh, handy. So let's see. We have something like this one, D8. Some of these pieces more towards the top. And like this one here, for example. So um, for the time being, I think I probably will just go ahead and seal that up. But yeah, for the time being, there's some other kind of parts of the build that we can just kind of work on here a little bit. Um, for example, I talked about last time the option if we want to have, uh, sorry, getting kind of crowded here. This panel here on the front, a lot of people will cut this out and then turn that into like an open uh, detail. I don't think that I want to do that. Actually, now that I'm thinking about like with my idea of the pilot just kind of out, it might look kind of cool to actually have this so that like the hatch is open and maybe make it look like he's like looking at something like standing up in the in the cockpit and like looking out over here at like this open hatch to see if there's like something weird. It might be a cool idea, but I don't know. I think we'll be, <laughs> we'll maybe skip that. I'll just stick with closing this up. So this is the piece that's used for uh, right here, but you actually do have an option for that, uh, which is right here. Uh, I believe this was, um, no, this is for the Falke. Let me see. I And I was thinking, I was wondering like where this part came from. Just toss that. Uh, how you have one piece, one option, which is basically just flat. And then you have the other option, which is this raised detail like that. And I was wondering, uh, maybe like, because there's one that there's different versions that have the uh, the Gatling gun and different versions that have the laser gun, like between the Falke and the Griffin. So that oh okay maybe one has this raised part and then one has this like maybe the Griffin just has this part. But I was looking at photos online and it like every single photo of this kit that I can find online, whether it's as the Falke or as the Griffin or whichever different version, it seems like it's always has this piece on here, which I, I have to say, I understand why, because it's like a visually more interesting piece, having this like raised detail there instead of having it just this this flat uh, flush part like that. Uh, but then I was just kind of curious as to like, okay, well, where, why is this, which kit was this from? Maybe it was from the original, I guess, uh, but I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and do some more looking. I didn't do that much digging into it, but it was just something I found kind of interesting thinking about like which part to use. But yeah, the original design uh, has this detail, so that's what I'll stick with. But this one is interesting, having it just flat. It could be kind of cool. And it's probably what I'll use for maybe a later, a different build, not this build. But, uh, maybe he's about to work on the internals. What's up? Hey, sorry. Uh, sorry, what's going on here in the chat? All right. Red5 asked, do you normally stick... Okay, I just answered that question. Uh, New Age Retro said, hey, I put in an order yesterday or the day before, and I'm wondering uh, if I'll be able to get the June Rehize sticker. It looks super awesome, but I couldn't order this month until now. Uh, I'm not sure. Sorry, New Age Retro. Um, I'm not sure. You would have to email support about that. Sorry, I can't answer that. I could go ask, but then, you know, 
kind of in the middle of something. So if you just email the support, they can tell you they're down there. Um, Jazz said, have you been keeping up with Genshin since your move to the US or things been too crazy? Oh, no, I've definitely been keeping up. <laughs> yes, I've definitely been playing. Uh, I got Yelan, which I was very happy about. And then on the current banner, I I didn't get Ito the first time the first time around. And I actually don't remember now if like if I pulled for him and didn't get him, maybe I lost the 50-50, or if I just didn't pull for him. I didn't really I wasn't that interested in getting Ito, so I can't remember if I maybe just skipped the banner or not. But anyway, I didn't have Ito is the point. And then uh, on the current banner, I just wanted Kuki. But I ended up getting Ito as well. So good for me, I guess. So I, I'm still, I'm still like, for the most part, uh, free to play. Basically, I'm not like spending money on the game, really. I have uh, like a little bit from time to time. And I'll get like the Battle Pass and the Welkin Moon. Um, but other than that, I don't like drop a bunch of money on, on just Primo Gems. Anyway. Uh, trying to get a few more, at least, you know, whatever else I can get uh, before the banner is done without spending money. I'm trying to get more constellations for Kuki, but I think right now I've just got her at uh, C1, I think. But it would be nice to at least get C2 or C3. I don't think I'll get to it, though. But that said, the, uh, the shop refreshes, I think, uh, tomorrow, I believe. So that'll be, you know, at least... Uh, couple of free wishes essentially yeah i can get from the shop so anyway yeah i've been keeping up uh, i actually really like playing with yelena before uh most of the time i don't really enjoy using uh bow characters uh, but i have really been enjoying using uh sarah a lot and also yelan recently i don't have ganyu i know that's like everybody loves ganyu i don't actually really like ganyu that much and i don't have her so it all works out um, the flat piece, let's see. Um, but anyway, just as a final note here, since we're talking about uh, Genshin Impact, I just haven't had an opportunity to stream it. So as you guys know, like when I was in Korea, I I, I live streamed uh, playing Genshin Impact uh, a couple times, which was fun, but I just haven't had the opportunity to do that. And I don't expect that I will because my live stream setup is here and not at home, so I can't do it from home, like in the evenings. Uh, that's a very nice green close to the Kshatriya colors. Yes, it is very close to the HG Kshatriya colors, yes. Uh, hey, will they ever, will you ever build the HGUC Juagu? <sighs> Probably not, I'm just not a fan of the design, so I, I doubt it. Uh, that, flat beat, that flat piece looks like it could be utilized like an access panel for maintenance, kind of like the pod racer or something. Yeah, definitely. I mean, either one of these, like I said, I've seen a lot of custom builds where people will have this hatch open. I mean, you could either, whether you use whichever version of this armor panel, you could have it, uh, you know, built in a way that it looks open. Yeah, definitely. I think the flat one probably would be easier for that. Yeah, than this one, just because of the shape of it. It's maybe a little bit more difficult to do that. Uh, my wife jinxed me on the Ito banner. I only wanted Kuki, and she said I'd pull Ito, and in 10 pulls I got him. Yeah, I also got him way before Pity. It was a lucky pull for me, too. I don't know. Uh, it's interesting. But on the standard banner, I'm at, like, 80 pulls. I'm at, like, 80 Pity. And I, so I, at any moment, I'm due for pulling something five-star on the standard banner. So I'm anxious to see what that's going to be. Hopefully, I'm really hoping for maybe Gene. Because uh, I think I have like Gene at the moment is maybe like C1. So it'd be cool to get like a C2 Gene. Uh, like Mona is like C2. Uh, like C2 on Mona, but I never use Mona. Uh, Deluxe also, I think C2 or even possibly C3. Or Chi Chi. Chi Chi is also, I think, uh, maybe C2. I think on Chi Chi. I use Chi Chi all the time. Chi Chi, uh, I know, I don't understand the community in general. No, it seems like there's very few people that are really into Chi Chi. Chi Chi seems like the, the, the character that people just 
it, well, I think it's just become kind of a meme at this point that people lose their 50-50 and get Chi Chi. I like Chi Chi. <laughs> uh, Jazz said, I was trying to lose the 50-50 for a guaranteed Kazuha. Yeah, uh, I already have Kazuha, and I'm really hoping that Kazuha will be the next banner. As far as I've seen, it's not been confirmed yet, but I'm really hoping that the next banner will be a rerun of a character that I already have, so that it'll give me the opportunity to just save up <laughs> because I just am just dry on resources now at the moment. So... Uh, I just want to be able to get a chance to save up for another character I'll gonna want later. Uh, what do you think about the GPO3 Dendrobium? If possible, would you build it? Yeah, I I would love the opportunity to build it. I just don't want to buy it. <laughs> it's so expensive. Uh, but just like just basically just to have the experience, I would enjoy building one. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to paint one. That's a whole different thing, and just a ton of work that. I don't know if I'd be in for that because if, if I really wanted like to do a big painting project, there's a lot of other stuff that like I already have like different kits and projects and stuff that I already have that I would prefer to work on than, than that. But I would love the opportunity to build one. Uh, what's the next contest? Uh, we go, Lennon's asking, we go X Machine Krieger. Uh, no, the next contest. <sighs> Well, if I knew for sure what it was, I couldn't tell you guys, obviously, ahead of the official announcement of it. But uh, there's some different ideas for it. So we'll, we've will we not uh, nailed down exactly what that's going to be quite yet. But we probably will do that in the next, in the next couple weeks and probably have an announcement on the next contest for you guys, probably around the middle of July. So the, uh, the art contest just wrapped up yesterday, I believe. So we're working on uh, judging that and should have the uh, winners uh, that we can announce for you guys on the live stream this coming Friday. No, just... Well, it's kind of uncomfortable there. So should have an announcement pretty soon for you guys uh, regarding the contest. Haven't been able to catch your stream since you moved back to the US. Misto, hello, welcome. Uh, that didn't drop him too big. It's like painting an igloo color. Yeah, it's very large. Maybe just get the HGC without the what I think is the dendrobium. unit. I mean, yeah, I actually have the HG uh, GPO3 kit. And it was one of my very first Gundam kits that I ever built, that HGUC kit. So I have it, and I built it probably 20 to 21, 22 years ago, something like that. So yeah, I've got that kit. It's already built, but and already built relatively poorly. I'd say probably not to my current standards. Did I just bend this or is it kind of bent already? Or or is this part naturally? Oh maybe it is just kind of bent as the shape of it. I've never noticed that it's bent. I just assumed it was flat. A little thin out the side here. And it's got some kind of injection prints there that I'll have to try to get rid of those. Hopefully it won't require like having to putty those in or anything. Luckily it's just a big flat surface, so if I had to put some putty on that's easy enough. It's not like I need to be careful of the details or anything. I don't know if you guys can see that, you can see what I mean. I better to get that in focus there. Those naughty guys. But I think that's on the bottom, fortunately, but still gonna have to gonna have to work on those. Your Croat We Go build is just amazing. Well thank you, Lennon. I really enjoyed that build a lot. Um, and I really uh, just enjoyed that build for a number of reasons, just because I, in my mind, I thought it was it's a cool idea. So it was nice to kind of, you know, when you have an idea of something that you think will look cool and just bringing that to life, you know, it's a very satisfying. Um, it's not like the the best model ever made, but, you know, it was just something fun and cool. I enjoyed it. Um, and also I just enjoy the whole... Um, 
just like the whole concept of that of just like mixing different genres uh or like uh different properties so like that was a mix of the uh, mech, uh mechatro parts and machine and krieger and then also used like some korbukia parts in there so like i really enjoyed that aspect of it mixing everything the origin gm intercept custom is a great hg so please review any of the origin gyms even p bandai ones i have reviewed the non p bandai one 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 i think there's only one the rest are all p bandai Mm -mm -mm. let's see so okay just trying to see how these parts go on the bottom um i was working on this hatch piece which includes d14 set that there just kind of uh, d can be the last one i pull out on it just kind of jumping around a little bit in the manual now at this point because uh aside from gluing the two main halves together it's basically just like a lot of little stuff kind of going on with this so just kind of working on all these separate pieces and then just kind of everything will come together at the end basically like this part is the internal detail of the cockpit hatch um favorite machine krieger kit favorite mechatro kit <laughs> favorite mechatro kit would probably be the uh powered arms one just because i like those cool like bigger arms that it has so i really like that kind of version there's not too many mechatro kits to choose from uh but favorite machine krieger kit that's a tough one i don't know like just like favorite design or like favorite kit to actually build might be a little bit different as well i don't know but that's really tough i would have a really hard time answering that It would be very difficult to choose. But I'm not really good at like picking favorites of anything. Like the Mechatro we go. Favorite Mechatro kit? That was a much easier question to answer. Just I don't know. Because number one, there's few options. And that's a pretty clear winner for me. Like the other options, like the mini Mechatro, which I don't really like the design of, or like uh the chunk, which is pretty cool, but I definitely prefer the original with the powered arms, or like uh, the uh, the walking one, which I think it, what was it called? It's just like called the what was that called? I don't know. Now I can't remember. Uh, anyway, the one that kind of looks like a, it's like a walking one that the person's like rides on in front of. Really tiny kit that's a cool design but i still i, I can still say what with certainty the uh powered arms one is my favorite with uh machine career it's so much more difficult though because there's a lot of really cool designs that i like a lot um so like this one i really like this design the falke um let's see Um, all right, that goes like that. Um, the uh, the Luna Diver Stingray, it's the one that I talked about last stream, is one that I'm working on at home at the moment. I really like that one, so that's why I'm like really excited to be working on one finally because I've never loved the design, but I've never built one just because it's a big kit. And probably the reason why it took me so long to to start building one of that kit in particular was just bec just like a confidence. Probably, I was just not confident in my skills. And even now, I would say I'm uh, just slightly confident. I do really enjoy 
building machine Krieger kits, but I definitely would not say that I'm that good at it. <laughs> building the kits is fine. I should, should say building the kits. I feel confident in my abilities in that aspect, uh, but more along the lines of like uh, just painting. I don't feel like my, my painting, especially like hand painting and especially weathering is not up to the level to really consider myself good at machine career kits, but I can build them. Weathering and doing all that is just a different story. Painting, the finishing work on them is where there's still plenty of room for improvement. Uh, these are not easy to tell apart. Uh, anyway, yeah, the Lynn Diver Stingray is a, a kid that I really, really like the design of it. But I had been putting off building one, just waiting until I was feeling a little bit more confident in my abilities, I think. Uh, hand painting ain't easy. Crazy how some people can hand paint so well using lacquers. Yeah, I think uh, like as far as like just the basic painting with lacquers, I think I am getting a little bit better with that. Just like kind of getting a handle uh, on just kind of like the basic painting. Uh, it's really kind of like uh, it's really an art, right? That just kind of it just takes a lot of practice to just like kind of really refine your refine your skills. I mean, like, I'm pretty good at getting the painting, getting the paint, done, you know, making it look nice. But that's really only kind of like the first step. Like with airbrushing, you can do that. And that's, if you can get the paint down looking good with an airbrush. That's kind of really all there is to it. And you can make a model that looks really good. Um, with hand brushing, there's, there's the opportunity to do so much more with it. And you know, just getting the paint down and making it look good is it's only kind of half of the half of the process, half of the art of that. If that makes sense. Think of it like this. Think of it like, uh, like, oh, that's different. Okay. Mm Think of it like if you, if you want a hamburger, you can go to a restaurant and get a good hamburger. And I'm not even talking about like McDonald's or something. I'm just I'm talking about like even like a a proper restaurant, right? And get a good hamburger, and that would be like airbrushing. Uh, or you can make a hamburger at home, and just the ability to make a hamburger at home, you know, you've got a hamburger, and that's fine. Oh no, block. I got some spam there in the chat. Sorry, guys. Um, but the ability to like really make like a really awesome burger at home all comes down to you know like your recipe and all the work you that you actually put into like how are things prepared and all that so i think that's hopefully makes that makes sense as like a decent analogy to kind of help explain like uh, what makes what makes hand brushing more difficult, at least for me, anyway. And I should also say, I'm not trying to make it seem like uh, airbrushing is cheap and easy. You know, there's certainly a skill involved in you know doing good airbrush work as well. You have to know about like how paints are going to work and all that. So 
That's all that's important. But hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, let's move on, shall we? Yes, yeah, sorry about the bot there in the chat. So I went ahead and blocked that, so it should be fine. Um, just cool how some modelers get that wet blend look with lacquers. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm. That's what I mean. Like, there's certain things that you can do with like how you how you paint with lacquers, uh, with handbrush that are just more difficult. It takes some practice, definitely. So that's what um, that's what I need to work on more. But I'm getting there. I feel like I'm getting, you know, more comfortable with it, which is good. Like just the more comfortable you get with just the simple act of just putting the paint to the model. That's like a big step, I feel like. You know, kind of overcoming that mental block of like, oh, I'm gonna ruin my model. Just kind of getting comfortable with putting paint on and not worrying too much about that. I'm just letting it letting it flow a little bit. Mm. Just uh, on this part, a lot of the mold uh, mold line removal and stuff like that, I'll I'll work more on later on some of these other parts. But just kind of on these parts, just doing some of it now, just while I'm here. mold lines and stuff to remove mold detail on some of these parts. Uh, ODST Films, I'm going to head out. Peace. See ya. Thanks for hanging out for a little bit. I definitely didn't check the underside of the other piece. Hopefully there was not this same detail on that one. Uh, is there any Hasegawa Macross model kits in US Gundam store? I can't find them online. Um, I... If they're not on the store online, then I would say no. I don't know offhand what we might have or not. But I mean, just on the website would be the best bet. Uh, Red5 said, yeah, the paints dry up fast. Yes, of course, that's one of the difficulties with working with lacquers. The uh, dry time is not forgiving <laughs> because they're just not really made to be uh, Hand brush necessarily. Uh, Macross model kits are expensive, are as expensive as perfect grades. They can be, yeah, there's some expensive ones for sure. Uh, you're joking about leaving? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see, we can also go ahead and glue this piece on. Let me just give a little test fit to this, this little uh, camera, kind of a little detail. Eh, maybe not a camera, just kind of like a little vent detail kind of thing here on the laser gun. This basically fits on there like that. But there's a weird... There's a panel line that goes up to where the seam was, and then it just kind of stops there. So that's kind of weird. As we were saying, let's backtrack a little bit or, yeah, because I still can't decide which weapon I want to do. I'm also kind of thinking about like, whichever weapon I don't use then becomes just le leftover parts that I could use for something else. So thinking of it that way, I think this laser gun 
a lot more difficult to make this work with anything else other than this kit. So I'm trying to kit bash this with like something else. Whereas the Gatling gun it could pretty easily be kit bashed with kind of just about anything really. So I think I probably will go ahead and just use the laser gun. Um, just because like if I had an idea in mind where like I thought this would look better based on like the idea I have in my head, I thought think this build would look much better with the Gatling gun. I would just go ahead and do that. But for the idea that I have, it really kind of doesn't matter which way, which weapon it is. So I think I'm just going to go with the uh, laser gun here because I do like the design of it. It's a really cool looking weapon. So that's good. I will probably then just, while we're here, just go ahead and put together the uh, Gatling gun just so that I at least have it together. And I actually, just right off the top of my head, I actually do have a pretty good idea of how I might want to use that actually. So uh, the Gatling gun would look better with a Zaku. Um, maybe not a Zaku, but maybe with a Nachin tank, Kodobukiya Nachin tank kit, I'm thinking that eh, might be. So one of the things over here, I have a couple of kits kind of set aside that are like uh, kits that I want to work on, like kind of custom builds or something. One of them being the Nachin kit. I haven't exactly, you know, sat down and really thought about what exactly I want to do with it, but I think that would be a pretty good idea. Something to do with it, give it that. The Gatling gun from this kit is a really cool very nicely detailed um, weapon. Could look pretty cool with that kit. Um, Chris is here. Hello, Chris. Matt Cross Frontier is awesome, Ray said. Chris said, that's a uh, 50s hairdryer. Yeah, I know, right? Definitely does have that retro look, but that's why I love it. And I think it fits super well with the design. I mean, just the design of the ship it being all kind of with these big curvy lines everywhere. And then this just kind of works really well right there. So I was stressing out a little bit about this weird panel line detail here that just, it's like a panel line that goes to nowhere and then just disappears, but it's gonna be hidden up underneath there anyway. So I guess I don't really need to worry too much about that. That's good. I wish Bandai would release more weapon sets like the Barbatos sets for other kits. Having the Origin Zaku weapons in 100 scale would be nice. Yeah, indeed. I know like if you want like a 100 scale version of the Zaku, the Origins sniper rifle, like the anti-ship rifle. I know you can get that as a resin set. I believe Simp makes that, and I've, I'm sure I've seen other, other uh, like 3D printed weapons makers online that also make that weapon. I would get the Simp one if you can, because uh, I know just the quality of the Simp uh, weapon sets are really, really nice. Um, but yeah, at least that particular weapon you can get in 100 scale. It's just not a plastic version from Bandai. Uh, let's see. Here. Dikultare, what? Hyoni. I don't know what that is, but Hyoni Anyong. Uh, ever think about making an airbrush for beginners video? Yes, I have been thinking about that for quite a while. I just have to make it. Well, for right now, I just don't have an airbrush set up. So I need to get the airbrush uh, set up in here. And that is definitely on my to-do list. Yes. Uh, a stray GT said, my smooth brain needs as much info as possible before I jump in. Well, yeah, I mean, if you want to wait for my video, I'll, you know, hopefully work on that sooner than later, but it's going to be at least a little bit because I don't have an airbrush set up yet. But uh, that is something definitely that I'm looking forward to making for you guys. But uh, if you don't want to wait, uh, at least check out Henry's video series he did on that, Vegeta 8259. I think officially his channel name is now changed to, I think it's just... Uh, Henry McClellan, I believe. Um, but that was kind of the main source that I use for just kind of getting into airbrush, learning kind of like the basic knowledge you need to get into airbrushing. Henry's videos that he made are really good. Um, and just on, I mean, there's a million videos on YouTube about airbrushing. Um, but if you want to uh, wait for mine, 
that's fine too. Uh, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that. Uh, 반가워요. You speak Korean well. Oh, 고마워요. 반갑습니다. Uh, I, let's see. I recently picked up the anti-ship rifle the USA Gundam store had in stock and plan on picking up another to go with my Robert Gilliam, Eric Mansfield, Zaku. Cool. Yeah. So that's good. We had it in stock. I have a number of of the uh, simp weapon sets. One of them I used for the HGC Messer kit uh, custom build that I did about years, probably more like almost two years ago now at this point, I guess. So we got some pieces that can go on the bottom of the ship. Let's go ahead and just do that. Because this is not going to get in the way of anything, really, for closing up the build later. Uh, I discovered Major Williams' blogspot and it changed everything for me. Yeah, there's a lot of great resources all around online for if you want to get into airbrushing, for sure. My biggest advice for you, if you're interested in getting into airbrushing, is don't put it off for too long. It seems intimidating and it seems like there's a lot you have to know. And there's, you know, there's certain things that you need to know. But if you keep worrying about it and putting it off too much, I feel like the more you do that, the more regret you'll have later once you start doing it. Like once you get started and, you know, once you get the hang of it, you'll be like, hey, this isn't so bad. I really wish I would have started this a long time ago. That's how I felt. And I, like I said, I've talked about this many times, but like that's what I also hear from a lot of people is that everybody kind of wishes they would have started airbrushing sooner. So that's my advice to you guys, you know, if you're interested in airbrushing, just, you know, check out a few videos, kind of get the idea of what you need, get what you need, and you'll get started and you'll have hiccups along the way. But most things when it comes to like troubleshooting, airbrushing, or, you know, when you have, when you run across issues, they're usually pretty easy to, to figure it out what you're doing wrong and there's not that much risk to like actually like ruining anything like either ruining the model kit you're painting because you know if your paint's coming out wrong you can always just strip the paint and start again and if you're and it's very difficult to like actually ruin the airbrush so like if you're worried about like oh i don't want to spend you know a hundred dollars for an airbrush and then i don't know how to use it right and i just end up ruining it that's also very difficult to do uh, so I would say, you know, don't worry too much. Let's see. Uh, just really curious how many kits you've built, Bane asked. Uh, a lot. I, I couldn't tell you the exact number, but a lot. Uh, Storm said, the main hurdle I have for getting into airbrushing is uh, having space in my house to set up an airbrush booth. Not wanting to do it outside for the Florida community. I mean, like, yes, also being in Florida, I totally get what you're saying. Uh, and also not having a window to pipe the uh, exhaust out of. I totally understand. It's difficult. Uh, but, you know, once I have my setup here, uh, I'll share that with you guys. And hopefully that might be a good, a helpful resource just to kind of see how you can do it. And then maybe that might be something that will work out for you as well. So should be working on that and hopefully that'll be helpful um odst said i ordered the hduc gun cannon on new type with the old zaku 2 fz and those two are awesome yes uh, both of which the gun cannon and the zaku 2 fz are not among my, some of my favorite designs but hey if you like it then cool those are also both pretty old HGC kits, so you have to have an appetite for the classics, which I don't always do either. 
What that? Where's this piece? D3. Where's that? Did I already cut it off? And I. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. So, okay. There we go. I keep looking at this thinking that there's something I'm missing, but there's not. So, you can get this one here as well. So these are all just pieces that just go onto the bottom side of this. So, I'm just going to kind of move along with these. So, I just get all these cut out here. Um, that one goes onto the side. That one goes, let's see, D32. Where does that go? On the front, I believe. Uh, what? Hmm? D32. Where does that go? Where does that piece go? I'm sure I'm like looking at it. It's right in my face and I'm not seeing it somewhere. Where does this piece go? Anyway, uh, let's see. Astray said, I'll try and catch up here in the chat again. I tried it out at a friend's house, but damn, it was hard to get going. Airbrushing? Mostly getting the ratios down and keeping the brush from getting clogged and whatnot. I mean, you have to work with the right materials. I mean, with the, the right lacquer thinner with the right paints or, you know, whatever paint you're using. Um, getting the ratio, that's another thing, you know, I would say not to worry too much about exact percentages. You can if you want, but if that's stressing you out, I would say just uh, try just eyeballing it, which is what I do. Uh, and it works most of the time. You don't have to get too scientific with it. Uh, Hyun asked, uh, what do you think of Bandai's Batmobile model kit? Do you like it? No, uh, I'm just not into it just because I'm not into uh, Batman. But so I don't know. I don't have not built it and I don't plan on building it. It's kind of cool, I guess, that they made it for people that are into Batman. I think it's like uh, 10 years too late, though. The uh, the um, what do I want to say? The uh, popularity of like superhero movies and stuff was, you know, much higher before. I feel like it's starting to die down a little bit now because, like, after like Avengers Endgame, you know, like that was the big thing. Everybody had to watch all the superhero movies, like building up. I mean, even though we're talking about Batman, you know what I mean? Still, like, the craze was still going hard because there was all this build going to Endgame. And I feel like after that, it's really died down a lot because, I mean, that was like a big thing that all these big, huge movies that were super popular were all building up to. So there was just a lot of hype that I feel like died down a little bit. So I think if Bandai would have put out a kit like that like 10 years ago, probably would have been even better. But uh, Any tips to speed up parts of the painting process? I started a new job a few months ago and haven't had as much time. Um, yeah, not really. And the painting process, painting process is just not... Uh, not a part of the modeling process that I could really recommend, uh, you know, trying to cut corners in any way. I mean, like, one thing that you can do is just spend less time sanding. You know, that's it's one thing that you can do. Like, if I'm, like, really excited about a kit or something, or, like, if it's just a kit that, you know, maybe doesn't, I feel like I can get away with not doing quite as much, spending quite as much time like sanding everything, then, you know, you can do that. Uh, but as far as the actual painting goes, it's really, I would not recommend, you know, trying to rush too much. It's a thing that kind of really benefits from putting the proper time into it. So I would just, that'd be my, sorry to say, <laughs> my recommendation for you. Uh, are you going to get the HG Gundam Ariel? Yes. Ray asked. Um, Sprile Seahorse said, the resolution is messed up on YouTube and Twitch and the live stream is choppy, just let me know. Sorry about that, guys. If uh, anybody else is experiencing issues with the live stream, let me know. But that's the first I've heard about it so far. So, But do let me know, guys, if you're having issues. I'll see what I can do. I don't know if there's much I can do, but what's your favorite kit you built and what's the most expensive kit you built? Thane asks, you most expensive kit that I've built. Maybe like mm, a perfect grade. Yeah, probably the perfect grade Phoenix that I live built last year. Where did 
Where does this piece go? D32. That's bothering me because I'm feeling like I left it off somewhere. But it looks like it goes like there on the front or something. No, I think it goes on the back. Where does it go? No. D32. No. And unfortunately, uh, I've never seen this in any Machine Kruger manual, so I think it's fair to say that it's just not done. But in Machine Kruger manuals, they don't show you on the menu which parts are not used. So you kind of just have to figure it out. And I cannot seem to figure it out. So it's possible that it was a part that was specifically for the Griffin, maybe, and so is not used with this kit, but I'm very curious. Hmm. Okay. So anybody who's maybe built this kit, if you know, let me know. Uh, one of these days I'll get a house and hopefully one with a garage. Yes. Stormed. Um, every time USA Gunham Store sends me an email that the PGU Grams is in stock, as soon as I check it, it's sold out again. Please help. Unfortunately, there's not really too much that I can do to help. What I would recommend, if if it's available for back order, I would just order it. Because I know usually with that kit, as far as I understand, um, the reason that you'll get the email and then when you go to the website, it's already sold out. It's just because we'll get some, you know, but not that many. And then, um, you know, you, you and everybody else who, who checked that they wanted to get an alert for that kit all gets emails at the same time. So that's basically a race of everybody who got the reminder email to get in and then try to get their pre-order in. Uh, so like ODST mentioning that uh, new type have it. So like any other stores that doesn't do like pre-ordering or back ordering, uh, I mean like, if you think, okay, like if it's a kit that's coming from Bandai and like we're going to get 50 of that kit and another store is going to get 50 of that kit, you're just belly aching. Okay. Anyway, but um, yeah, just, I mean, just for people who are, are wondering, I mean, like if we're going to get 50 of that kit and another store is going to get 50 of that kit, we put it up for back order, you know, and, you know, setting a limit at 50 because that's how many we know we're going to get. But I know normally... I mean, this is all just example numbers. Don't quote me on any of this, but um, so we'll, I know like usually what Adam will do is like, if we know we're getting 50, he'll put up a back, back order limit of like 40. So then, you know, we, we, we know we won't oversell what we're going to get. So like those back orders might sell out and then it will show, you know, like uh, I think at that point, I think it shows like sold out on a website until the kit actually comes in. And then once that kit is actually here, those 10 that were still available that were not backordered, that was kind of like our, our buffer zone of making sure that we didn't oversell, uh, then those 10 will be ones that go into stock, you know, on, and then everybody gets an email reminder, you know, okay, this is in stock now. And then it's basically the first 10 people who get in there in order are the ones that are gonna get that. So that's why it may look like other stores get more in stock because they're getting their full 50 and the all 50 kits are going online. Whereas when we get it, we're getting 10 that go online, but actually it was the same total amount. It's just, you know, some were already sold ahead of time before the kits actually arrived. If that makes sense anyway. Right. Um, email notification has been a lifesaver for me. I've gotten several kits through. Yeah. I mean, it, hopefully it's helpful for you guys, but um, again, how it's been with Bandai, we just don't get a lot of kits. So like with that kit or with other kits, I mean, like, for example, like the RG Exia or something, we'll get in like a box of them. So it'd be like 12 that we'll get in. So the, the it'll go into stock and the email will go out to everyone, but we only had, you know, so many. So it's going to be sold out 
real fast. Um, all right, will you make a custom gun cannon too? Probably not. Uh, but one like kind of similar kit, the gun cannon detector, is one that I would like to work on at some point in the future. I don't have plans to work on it anytime soon, but uh, the RE100 gun cannon detector is a, a kit that I really like, uh, that I would like to work on. I think it would be a fun one to do some work on. Uh, have you seen an entry guide RX-782 Gundam made from eggshells called Ecopla? I have seen that kit. I I haven't, and I've seen people talking about that it's made from eggshells. I haven't seen anywhere official that says that it's made from eggshells or that it's Ecopla. I mean, it could very well be. It's just I haven't seen that. I've only heard people mentioning about it. Usually Ecopla means that it's made from recycled plastic, but then usually the Ecopla kits are black because it's just like made from just recycled mixed plastic. It's not all, all the correct color. But I can understand maybe they're still calling it Ecopla, but rather than made from recycled plastic, it's made from plastic mixed with eggs. I'm sure it's not made entirely, completely of eggshell. Uh, Also, I wonder if it's maybe, again, just because I haven't seen any official information on it, I don't know, but I wonder if it's also maybe just a kind of mistranslation, misreading of that, and that they're just calling it like the eggshell version just as a reference to the color, not as like the reference to the actual material. But again, maybe, maybe they did actually mention on their Twitter, on Bandai's Twitter or something, that it is actually made of eggshells. I just haven't seen that, so I don't know. I couldn't say. I haven't. Like I said, I've heard people talking about it, but I've not actually gone and, and looked at any in, at any uh, actual information about it one way or the other. Either way, um, I mean, I'm not interested in it because, I mean, that, that's interesting, but I'm not going to like, oh, I need to buy another entry grade RX-78 too, which I already have like three or four of because this one's made of, partially of eggshells. It's like a mic, basically. If they were releasing the kit and it came with like something different, like it came with like a new weapon or something that was not included with other versions, like how they have the new version of the entry grade strike coming out uh, that comes with like those like mini kits in there. And also there's another, like one of the versions that's coming out is uh, coming with the Grand Slam sword it's like that's more incentive to build a kit or to buy a kit if the only gimmick of a new version is just that it's made from a different material but the kit is exactly the same that's uh, for me not that's not enough incentive to get the kit again unless it's a kit like i really really love or something i guess this uh very thin part here uh, just has some old lines on it that I'm just trying to sand away here a little bit. Uh, recycled paper is off color. Why not plastic? I can see how that works. Yeah. Um, are you still into the Pokemon models? Which uh, Pokemon would you like to see as a kit? Yeah, actually, tomorrow. Uh, there'll be a Pokepla kit review coming out uh, for the Rowlet kit. Just a very quick, not much of a review because those Pokepla kits, I mean, they're, they're so, especially the quick ones, are so simple. I don't do like a full-on review for them. It's just kind of a quick and simple thing. But yeah, that video will be out tomorrow, actually. But what other Pokemon would I like to see as a kit? Hmm. I don't know, not really any of like the, I feel like the small, simple, more cute kind of designs work so much better as model kits rather than like one of like the larger, more like ferocious designs, like a Charizard or Gyarados or something. I'm actually like less interested. Like they recently just had the announcement of the Gyarados kit coming out. Not as interested in that. Actually, I think like 
stuff like the Magikarp and Eevee and like those ones like that actually just are just more appealing as model kits to me, I feel like. What do you guys think? Uh, but then on that note, what would I like to see as a model kit? Hmm. Yeah, like a Dratini. Is there a model kit of Dratini? I feel like there probably is already. I think there is. And it's like in like a Dragonpla, uh, or it's not Dragonpla, a uh, Dragon set that comes with like, I think is Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite maybe. That's in like the regular Pokepla line. I'd like to see maybe a Pokepla quick Dratini. That could be kind of cool. Uh, please make a custom gun cannon heavy custom. <laughs> What's with all the gun? It's all the gun cannon talk today. Harapla Voltorb. Yeah. That could be cool. Uh, yes, there's a set of those three, right? But. Uh, the po the regular Pokeplow line, like usually they try to make it just as like a an articulated model kit that you know you can actually like change the pose of and whatever. Uh, I'd be less interested in that of Dratini, more of a Pokeplow Quick release. And the Pokeplow Quick ones are just like a fixed pose kind of thing for the most part. Um, where it's just like you're basically just building like a little putting together like a little Pokemon figure, essentially. I think that would look nicer. That would look nicer. The thing about what makes those look nicer is because then they don't have joints if they're just fixed bows. And I mean, they're supposed to be model representations of like animals, essentially, and animals don't have joints unless it's like like an onyx or something that would make sense. But like on a, something like a Dratini, it's just kind of, it takes away visually from it just by having joints and stuff there. Uh, I've always really liked the Hitmon line, which they have more merch. Yeah, that's true. Those ones as well, I think I would prefer if they were just Pokeplot quick and didn't have joints and stuff and were just fixed pose. I'd be totally happy with that. Hitmon Lee, Hitmon Chan. Him on top, not as much. I don't know. Was never really as much into that design. Probably just because um, him on top was was that gold and silver that came out, or was that Gen three? I don't know. I'm not one of those that's like only into the 150. But I mean, I definitely have much more, much more uh, nostalgia for the original 150. There is plenty of plenty of like Pokemon designs that I like from Gen 2, Gen 3. But uh, him on top is not one of them. Uh, you just like, just like the gun cannon, eh? Fair enough. So that's interesting. I'm going to glue these parts on here. Uh, Gen 2 hit one top. Okay. Yeah. Was not, not that big of a fan. Um, I feel like the entire Porygon line is perfect for the Pokeplot Quick on. Yeah. That's a good. Yep. That's a good call. And that one I could go for like either Porygon or Porygon 2, Porygon Z. Any of those would be cool. Yeah. Definitely. Kind of need tweezers, but I'm just gonna try see if I can do this without tweezers. And that part in there, I think I got it. I feel like that shouldn't be moving though, if that's in the right place. Uh, is there a model of the Bebop from Cowboy Bebop? I don't know. Actually, to tell you guys a secret, I've never seen Cowboy Bebop. Sorry to say. Uh, 
Uh, I could see myself collecting a full set of Pokepla EV evolutions. Wait, so did you kind of lie? Lie about what? You asked me if there's a model kit, and I said I don't know. Is there a model of the Bebop from Cabo Bebop? No. I don't know. I don't believe so. I've, just because I've never seen the series doesn't mean that I wouldn't know if there's a model kit. I feel like I would know if there is, but as far as I know, there's not. Uh, don't watch the new one, but the OG was good. Yeah, I mean, like, of course, I know it's a classic, and everybody loves it. It's just not something I've ever, ever taken the time to watch. What can I say? All right. So I think uh, for the for today's video for this live stream, I guess I should say. Um, I think probably what I'll just do for now is just get a few more of these pieces glued on to the bottom side, basically. We're just adding some of like the detail parts and stuff here to the bottom. And I think what I'll do then in the meantime after that is just basically get the finish up the rest of the construction and then maybe the next live stream we'll maybe do some of the painting or something yeah there's not that much more of the construction that really needs to be done other than just kind of putting the main body together and just adding a few more of these little parts so it's nothing really too consequential as far as the build goes, I feel like uh, the main aspects of the build we kind of covered in the, in the first live stream, really. As far as uh, different machine and career kits go, like I said, this is my first time ever building the Falke. And compared to building other kits, I feel like it's a pretty simple one, really. Just in terms of like the number of parts, definitely in the number of seams. It's definitely, I mean, if you got the big seam that's going all the way around the ship, but other than that, there's really only a couple of parts. I mean, the laser cannon, the other side of the laser cannon, and that was basically an engine, like a little bit on the engine. So three seams and then the big one, Kind of the main thing so yeah not too bad anyways gotta leave now so peace all right peace uh let's see since urusei yatsura is getting a remake i hope someone makes some new figures kits of uh lum yes i don't know is it lum or loom but uh yeah Another series that I'm only vaguely familiar with. Uh, cool character design, but yeah, I'm not familiar with the series at all. I love seeing like the builds of like uh, resin garage kits of the character online, like on Twitter usually, just because it's cool to see like how people paint her hair, having like the color accents in the hair. Always looks cool. So yeah, definitely can agree if we got like some new kits. I don't know what it would be. New figures maybe would probably be more likely than any new kit or anything. I couldn't see like Kotobuki making like a model kit of of that character. I just don't think that would really work. But let's see. Still can't figure out what this piece is. Still waiting on one of you guys to 
give me some sort of explanation for that. I may have to ask either in my and or in my Discord, because I know there's a couple other Machine Krieger fans there. Or I could ask in uh, Lincoln's Discord. Probably would be the best place. Or even the Facebook group. Or the Koyokama Facebook group. But I wouldn't want to embarrass myself there. <laughs> they ask in some sort of more private setting. Look like a total noob going in the Koyokama Facebook group. Thing. What? Where does this part go on the Falke? It's left over. I don't know where it goes. Uh, but I actually have a call with Lincoln tonight. So I could ask him. But I would assume somebody in my Discord probably knows. If possible, I would like to see a Pokemon Trainer Ash as a figure eye standard model kit. I think, yeah, I don't really like the figure eye standard line. Uh, so, I mean, I wouldn't be too excited about that personally. Uh, and I don't think I would be personally too excited about just like a uh, any sort of model kit of Ash. But, yeah, I could definitely see the appeal of that. Like, just it's not for me personally, but I think it would be cool. Bandai were to make that, and it would make a lot of sense. I mean, they have all their Pokeplot kits. Uh, why not make a figure eyes kit of Ash? Yeah. Totally. I don't know if maybe uh, if that's different licensing Bandai has to have, like from, from Pokemon, like the licensing for making kits of the, of the Pokemon is one thing, and then maybe it's a whole separate thing for making model kits of the characters. So maybe Bandai just doesn't want to mess with that, paying additional licensing fees for the characters. Because if you notice, even on like any of the box art, they never show like any of the characters on the box art, as far as I know. Oof. All the tiny mold line detail. All right, last couple parts here. Oh no, the spam is back. And blocked. Okay. Mm. Team Rocket figures. Yeah, they could make Team Rocket too. They could make like all the originals. They could make a uh, figure as standard Ash, Brock, Misty, and then make like a Team Rocket set. Make like a Jesse and James as a set. Yeah. You can make Ash as like a standalone kit and then make like a, um, Brock and Misty as a set and Jesse and James as a set. That could be cool. But do they really, in the figure standard line, they really don't do sets. I mean, because like, uh, I'm just trying to think of what else they've made that could have been a set. Like, for example, there's uh, the Android, the Dragon Ball Z uh, Android. Is it 17 and 18? Right? I believe. Those they could have easily made as a set, right? But they released them individually, so I don't know. If they were to make uh, Pokeplot, Jesse, and James, maybe they wouldn't make it as a set. But I think it would make a lot of sense. If I was in charge at Bandai, that's what I would do. Because, I mean, let's be real. If they've made Jesse and James separately, everybody, I think, many, many more people would buy the Jesse kit and many fewer people would buy the James kit. So Bandai would be having to deal with low sales numbers on one and not the other. What do you guys think? You agree on that or? Uh -uh. Uh, there are so many 
waifus and Pokemon. I'm surprised they aren't figure eyes models. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe there, maybe there's like additional licensing that Bandai would have to get in order to do that. Like maybe their licensing for Pokemon is only for the Pokemon and not for any of the characters. That would be my guess. Or maybe they just don't think that there's enough market to make them as figure eyes kits. I don't know. Figure eyes standard needs to needs a reboot. The quality seems to be dropping. Yeah, I don't know if I mean I don't know if the quality is dropping or if it's just not been that good. And now especially maybe it just seems like it's dropping just because of like how good uh, similar lines are in comparison. Damn. What's with the spam? Shit. Uh, like the 30 Minute Sisters line, for example, um, with how nice those kits are, like in comparison and being like somewhat similar, like a human body type of kit, right? They really kind of make the figure as standard line look pretty bad in comparison. I'm gonna have to switch it up here a little bit. Some old lines. They so have this this parts here that I'm working on are these kind of like greebly parts here that go on the kind of lower sides of the kit and just like mold lines all over the place. be honest, I don't know how visible this part is going to be. Maybe I don't really need to worry too much about these mold lines, but I feel like I probably do. So I'm going to do my best. That's going to take going to take a little while just on these two parts. Just a little filing. Ah, more spam. Dude, if they made model kits of Chris from Crystal, I would flip out. Uh, you should make the chat sub only to get rid of the bots. Ah, that's a good idea. I actually did not know that you could do that. It's obviously another, like, byproduct of that too is and I guess it gets people to sub right people that are stopping by to check out the stream and maybe not subbed either intentionally or not intentionally some people you know I've heard from people sometimes that they watch my videos regularly and they just figure that they were subs subscribed and then they realize that they weren't so I'll sometimes get a message like Oh, I've been watching your videos forever and thought I was subscribed to you, but I realized that I wasn't, so I went ahead and subscribed. So I gotta say, uh, thank you. Hmm. And the trouble, too, with pieces like this. Aside from just the fact that it's got all the mold lines that I'll need to be saying, it's just that it's a very fragile piece. So just have to be really gentle with it and just kind of makes it take that much longer. But if we can, I would like to at least just get this part, these last few parts here stuck onto the kit before we wrap up the stream for today. They're actually kind of quite interesting pieces here on the bottom. Aspects of the design that I never really pay much attention to, but they are on the bottom of the ship, so areas that you just don't really see quite as much of. All right. Phew. That should be enough with the file. 
Then we need to go in with a sanding stick. All right, uh, how much time per day, week do you spend on modeling? Well, it's my day job, so at least nine to five. And then maybe a couple nights a week, I'll also put in a few hours at home. Uh, are these, Geek Eric asks, are these kits more time intensive than Bandai kits? Yeah, absolutely, but that's, you know, not necessarily. It really depends on how much time and effort you know you put into your Bandai kits. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of people who you know could spend just as much, if not more, time you know on a Bandai kit than someone typically would on a Machine Krieger kit. It also depends on which Machine Krieger kit you're talking about. It's like I was saying earlier, this one, you know, just compared to other ones, um, is a little bit more simple. So maybe like the actual like general construction of it. It's gonna be a little bit quicker than something like the Luna Diver kit. Um, but in general, yes. The you know simple answer to your question is yes, uh, these kits are more time consuming because they just require more uh, just modeling skills that uh, don't necessarily are, are needed for Bendai kits but uh, not to the same degree, usually. Not as much. Like, you can build, like, a Bandai kit very simply and easily and not ever need to touch anything other than, you know, nippers and a knife, basically. But these kits, like, you need glue, you need paint, uh, drill, other different sanding products, things like that, whatever else you might need, but it's definitely more, uh, yeah, more involved than you know, what you need generally for a Bandai model kit. For anything recent, if you're like comparing it to like an old, like 80s kit from Bandai, then, you know, it's comparable. So like this, I'm having to spend all this time on just basically these two parts, just because trying to get rid of all the, it's a very complicated and thin little detail part that has the mold lines going all the way around it everywhere. So how's it going, Zach? I'm building the integrated new Gundam. Well, that should be a pretty quick build. Let's see. I see lots of hardcore paint jobs on these. Yeah. Yeah, it just kind of goes back to the, these are definitely more kind of traditional model kits. I mean, you can do paint jobs on like Bandai Gundam kits, you know, or just like you know, customization and custom painting and weathering and all that and spend loads and loads of time on them. But most people generally don't do that. Whereas uh, with Machine and Krieger kits, yeah, definitely, I think a, a higher percentage of people who build them do put a lot more time into them. Uh, let's see. Uh, need to wrap up the stream here in a minute. So it's going to be just about it for today. Guys, we didn't necessarily do a whole lot of building. I feel like we've finished most of the building aspect of this in the stream on Monday. So if you missed that and you're interested, you can go back and check that out. But yeah, and this video is just kind of uh, finish. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of further work on the general construction, the details of the build, and then just kind of planning out where to go from here. And generally, that's kind of how it works a lot of the time for um, my experience of building Machine Krieger stuff. Is that hmm, that um, there's a good amount of time, or like the, I just kind of start off, just start putting the kit together, and then kind of 
because then, you know, once the kid, is, you can't really, you have to at least put the kid together. Uh, and then you kind of move on to the next steps of, you know, what then, then what are you going to actually do with it? So like, that's usually kind of how my process goes with these is um, just start putting things together and kind of let the ideas flow a little bit. And yeah, I'm not going to be able to put these parts on until the engine is in place. So I'm going to have to leave these off for the time being, but at least they're all ready. So these parts will go on here like this. At least you guys can kind of see how these are going to fit onto here later on, kind of like that. They go on like kind of the bottom side of where the engine goes, which is going to be in here like that. So anyway, all right. So that's kind of all that we can do for at the moment. And I need to wrap up the stream. So still a mystery of this part. Where does this go? Let's see. I feel like it kind of goes like, I don't know. Something here, 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 at the front or something. No. Kind of looks like maybe it goes like somewhere around here or at the front. Yeah. Okay. It definitely goes here. It must. It fits here, basically. So it must go. Yeah, it must go in here or something like that. But it's not fitting. I just get that off of here. As far as I can tell, there's no point in the construction where we're going to use this with this. So I guess with this kit, we're not going to use it. But now I'm wondering which kit does use it. So it's like this, like, uh, it's onto the bottom of here or something like that. I don't know. Interesting. I'm going to look into that. But for now, guys, yeah. Uh, so that's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for coming and hanging out for you know building something different. The next live stream will probably be starting on the painting, I would imagine. Um, yeah, you're welcome. A couple people said, thanks for the stream. Thanks for chatting. Yes, you're welcome. Um, yeah, next stream, uh, like I said, I do want to try to cover as much of the build as possible with you guys. But as far as like putting a kit together, we're essentially just need to glue and then putting the last bits on. So maybe, I mean, we can maybe do that. I'll, uh, between now and the next live stream, I'll maybe just glue the two main halves together and then the next stream we can finish putting everything else on because basically there's all the leftover all the pieces that we still have left to put on i can't put anything on until the two main halves are put together essentially so yeah i'll go ahead and do that and then in the next video we can just finish putting everything else onto the kit so it should be relatively simple but at least we can then just kind of see how it all comes together in the end and then it'll just be from that point on, just getting into the painting. But there you have it. So, all right. As always, guys, again, like I said before, thanks for coming and hanging out. Until next time, we'll see you all later. Have a great day. It's Wednesday. See you soon. Bye.